So we have uh, two now, two guests on to kick off our discussion here. We've got Jennifer Kern. She is the contributor for the Daily Caller and the Hill and also Richard Roth, Democratic strategist and founder and partner of the Roth Law Firm. Uh, good to have both of you guys on. Happy President's Day, by the way, taking time here Great to be here. I want to start with this, uh, Jennifer. We've got these incredible images, right? The president taking part in one of the biggest, arguably the biggest spectacle here as far as sports go, shy of the Super Bowl, right? Uh, but <laughs> all, there's still that growing chorus of those who are demanding change in the DOJ, if you see that. What, what, what do you make of this here? Well, look, yesterday was uh, the president in beast mode, literally kicking off what I think is the 2020 election season. I mean, that was hands down uh, one of the greatest political moves uh, of all time. First started by President Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. the first president to say, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines from Air Force One. George W. Bush, of course, went to NASCAR, but President Trump took it to just a whole new level yesterday with that lap. Now, he does this uh, under some criticism today about the cost of that trip. Uh, but Democrats and the mainstream media uh, seem to be forgetting that Michelle Obama took her share of trips. Uh, by the end of the Obama administration, the price tag for the Obama family travel was $100 million. $85 million of that in taxpayer money was for Obama family vacations. You could arguably say yesterday this was American people's business, showing the uh, entrepreneurism uh, of the American people. Richard, I noticed that you, you kind of chuckled a little bit listening to More that. Than a little. A little, okay, <laughs> all right, I'll let you take it. I mean, here's the deal. This is Don Donald Trump doing what he does best. He turns everything into a spectacle, into a TV show. That's what this is. It's no different than the State of the Union, where he hands, it's a grab bag here, and a, and a scholarship there, and a, and, 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 and a little thing over here, and a, and, a, and a medal of courage here. Donald Trump is very good at the TV, at the spotlight. But the question is really how to run this government. Let's not talk about how much money is being spent across the street from us with Trump Towers in New York, with Donald Trump and the presidency, because the numbers are outrageous. But the, but the point here, what's the, the important political issue here? Yesterday. It's not that Donald Trump did a little circus. It's that it's that Barr, his number, the number one attorney in the country, was asked by 1,100 former prosecutors to step down. It is outrageous that Barr has taken has taken control or trying to get control of the Stone case. He does it through a tweet. And John Kennedy, who's an avid supporter of Donald Trump, said, "Listen, yesterday on, on Meet the Press, he said, listen." The bottom line is that Mick Jagger has a great voice, but Mick Jagger should not go into church choir and start singing. And that's his analogy to Donald Trump. He said he can do it, but he shouldn't tweet. And by tweeting, he's upsetting the entire system. It's very upsetting to lawyers like me when, when Barr and Trump try to interfere with the process, which, wor which works. Well, Jennifer, what would you say about Barr's service here? He, he's in the executive branch. Is the, the president has a right to tweet. That's the other argument, too. Certainly. And look, Mr. Roth is just jealous. President Trump does the TV game even better than their guy, Bill Clinton, who went on the Arsenio Hall show, played the saxophone, and answered the questions of Boxers versus Brief on MTV Rock the Vote. So I just mm. had to say that. As for Barr, look, uh, uh, 1,100 ex-DOJ swamp dwellers can call for his resignation. But the fact is... Bill Barr serves at the pleasure of the president of the United States, and the president is free to tweet. If lawyers are offended by a tweet, they need to grow a backbone. Uh, Barr was correct in wading into both uh, potentially uh, the McCabe case and the Roger Stone case. You look at the sentencing of the Roger Stone case, uh, look at the attorneys who say that that sentencing was egregious. You look uh, alone at the two to three years that have been tacked on to Roger Stone's sentence for, for witness tampering and witness I gotta, threatening. I gotta stop. I gotta this stop is right due to There's him. no sentencing. Let's be clear. This this is a prosecutor trying to get the maximum out of it. It's their job to uh -huh. be an advocate. And when their job to be an advocate is interfered, it's not about swamp dwelling. You can, I mean, the, the Trump campaign seems to throw names at you. It's not about swamp dwellers. It's about a system that's in place. The prosecutors are supposed to seek the most they can seek. Then the defendant, Roger Stone, puts in his, his, his um, if you will, assessment of, of, of what he should be, of, of what the sentence should be. And then what happens, it goes to a probation department, it goes to a sentencing department, it goes to the judge. That's the system. And by Donald Trump tweeting and Barr Coming in and saying the people that are in charge of this, who who indicted him, who who arrested him, who indicted him, who prosecuted him, and who are now sentencing him, should there should be no interference with their system. And the fact that Donald Trump thinks that his buddy should be taken out, then pardon him, pardon him when you want, but don't interfere with the system that's in place. Eleven hundred, you know, swamp dwellers. They, they have been there. There have been thousands of years of judicial experience by these swamp dwellers. Well, let me just ask you this really quick. As far as McCabe uh, 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 being essentially let go but admitting to lying there, then how do you justify that? I mean, the bottom line is that that's the system. The system is what it is. If if he if he admits to lying mm -hmm. and then he's let go, the prosecutors, who have far more knowledge than anyone, including Donald Trump, 
went through the evidence. They said, you know what? We don't have enough evidence to prosecute. We are going to probably lose this case. No different than Bill Cosby is being prosecuted. Right. No different than, than a Harvey Weinstein prosecution. You let the system work. And well, when I Donald Trump jumps in there and tweets, he interferes with the system. He doesn't understand the power of his tweets. It's I think really, it was really less that they, they could succeed that. with yep. it. Uh, look, McCabe admitted to lying or a lack of candor on at least four Not occasions. Not enough for conviction. Also, the DOJ's own IG said that uh, McCabe was responsible for some of the media leaks. That was unlawful. Uh, look, there's no doubt they could do it. I think what Barr has decided is they want to move on with some of the other pressing cases at the DOJ, including sanctuary cities. Trump's going to head to California tomorrow to talk about that. So Can't it'll be wait. very Listen, interesting. Can't wait. I, I got to say, uh, thank you both for coming on. As Jennifer Kearns, contributor for Daily Caller in the Hill, Richard Roth, Democratic strategist thank and founder you. of the uh, Roth Law Firm and partner as well. Thanks so much for both of you coming on and Fantastic. taking this holiday to spend it with us and your intelligence as well.